Hello, everybody. Happy Wednesday. It is about three o'clock, so that means your workday is almost over. Uh, my name is Samantha Smolik, and I'm the Coastal Compass Site Coordinator over here at Coastal Compass Education and Career Resource Center. Welcome. We have another great segment of Coastal Compass Connections. As you heard, the phone just rang, and I know it's those people that are watching us. You already want to call and find out what we have going on, right? You're like, no, Sam, we don't, but it's okay. Uh, Coastal Compass, we are a free education and career resource center right here in the Coastal Bend in Corpus Christi. So if you're familiar with us, you know us, you love us, this isn't new news to you, right? But maybe it's your first time joining us or it's your first time seeing. We are a free education and career resource center, like I said. We're located here at La Palmer Mall in Corpus Christi, so we're super convenient come on, stop on by. We're going to help you, uh, guide you to success in your education and career goals. So we always like to say, we're going to guide you to your version of success. So you come on in. All of our services are absolutely free of charge. There is no payment to you. You just come on in here and we're going to get you taken care of. Um, so we have a very special guest with us today. It's our partners over at Craft Training Center of the Coastal Bend. And we have Mr. Matt Opal, who is the Marketing and Outreach Coordinator for Craft Training Center. Hey, Matt, what's up? How's it going? Good to be here. Thank you for having or for having us. Thank, I thank you for coming, you know? Yeah. <laughs> no, it's just one of those days, you guys. But we have some great information that Matt is going to share with you all. So, um like I said, he is with Craft Training Center of the Coastal Bend. Um, they are all about the trades and the works, and you can always come in and speak with Matt himself in our center on Fridays. Um, and Matt, I know you have some great information to, um, you know, to share with everybody. So go ahead and take it away. Yeah, I'll jump into it. I'm gonna go ahead and open up my PowerPoint and share it. So okay. Let's see if I can figure this out. <laughs> you know, it's just uh, we're on computers all the time. And then once you're on on the air, it, it usually happens like this. But it is totally fine while we wait for you to get it pulled up. Um, how are things going over there? What What's currently going on? It's going good. We're right now we actually have a junior high camp going on and uh, we're uh, working through that. And uh, we have a summer camp going on for high school students and we're in our summer semester for our adults. So. You know, it's going really good. Lots of good things. Yeah. So your PowerPoint is up and you're ready to go. All right. There it goes. Like I said, I'm with a uh, craft training center. My name is Matt Opal. I've uh, been here for about a year and a half now. And my job is to kind of go out. I talk to high schools and I talk to adults at job fairs. I also keep up with like HR departments from different companies around the coastal bend. So I know what kind of projects are coming up. So when our students graduate, I can go ahead and get them connected with the job that they need. Um, so a little bit about Craft Training Center. We've been here for over 30 years. We're privately owned. We're a post-secondary education and a nonprofit. So post-secondary education is kind of anything that is after high school, anything that's going to help you get that job. Uh, nonprofit, um, we're something that's good for the community. Um, that means our board of directors, they don't get a big paycheck because we do good or anything like that. All the money that goes into us stays with us and uh, goes back into the system and gets more students through the program. Um, we have 72,000 square foot state-of-the-art training center. We have 98 welding booths, which is quite a bit. There's, I don't think there's any other training facility in South Texas with 98 welding booths. And they're really clean, really well kept. Um, we also have electrical instrumentation and pipe fitting labs and a 25 station ass assessment testing lab. Uh, that assessment testing lab is for our guys that are out in the field that have done this for so long that they didn't get an accreditation beforehand. So they learned it the hard way out in the field that they can come in and test with us and get their certification that way. Uh, what we teach, uh, we teach NCCR. We teach high school during the day and adults at night. Uh, that includes core, which is your basic safety and power tools, welding one through three for high school. Instrumentation one and two, that's gonna be your fitter and your tech. We also have an electrical apprenticeship program. And if you don't know what an apprenticeship program is, that's through the Department of Labor. And it's where you spend four years, you come here for classes at night, and during the day, you actually go get a job with a master electrician, and you get your on-the-job hours. 
So that's really cool because you actually get to see exactly what that job is like and you're actually doing it. So then after that four, four years, you get enough hours and you take the test and pass the test. You are then a state certified electrician and you can actually bid on state jobs, which is pretty cool. We also hold competitions here. Uh, it's just kind of for the high school section, but we also have the state competition for Skills USA. Uh, we have the we take part in the New Oasis County Livestock Show with the welding competition, and we hold our own welding competition. We just had that about a month ago here at Craft Training Center. For adults, it's pretty much the same. There's just a little more to it. We have our core, which is again our basic safety and power tools, welding one through eight. And I'll go into a little bit more about what these crafts are on another slide, but. Well, so you can see you go a little farther with welding here. So you get not just your uh, welding one through three, but you're all the way up to eight. Pipe fitting, crane operations, instrumentation, fitter and tech, that's one and two. Construction site safety and safety technology is now combined into one class, it's one semester. Um, electrical and plumbing apprenticeship. So we add plumbing as well into the apprenticeship program for adults. So here's a slide we kind of break down kind of your income level starting off of what you're going to do, how many semesters it takes to get there and what it's called. So I uh, shield metal arc welding, which is also known as stick that takes five semesters. Um, after you complete that five semesters, you're looking between 17 and a half to $27 per hour where you really want to get to though, is where you get your TIG or your gas tungsten arc welding. That's where you're going to be working more industrial type jobs with thicker plate and pipe. Um, you're looking at $24 to $44 per hour, which is really good. Now, if you have your own rig and you're doing TIG welding, you're looking between $60 and $100 per hour. So you'll see those guys with those big trucks. That's how much money they're making, which is really good. Um, pipe fitting takes four semesters. You're looking at about $17 to $36 per hour. Now, what I would recommend if you're only going to do the beginning of welding, where you're getting shield metal arc welding, I also get pipe fitting in there for a little bit over another year. And you can be a tacker fitter then, which is pretty cool. Instrumentation fitter and instrumentation tech. So you're in, a lot of people don't know what instrumentation is. I'll go ahead and kind of go into that. Um, most of that's your, a lot of the employees that are out at the refineries that are doing turnarounds and stuff like that. Those are your instrumentation people. So just like, a car has safety devices for when your brakes go out and a little light goes on your dash, warning you that something's going wrong. Well, they have that kind of same safety system throughout the whole refinery. So all of that's got to be maintenance, updated, monitored, and all that. So your fitter is the one that goes and like maybe disassembles the part and brings it back to the technician. Your technician is the one that actually does the repair, and then your fitter goes and fits it back up. Your tech will also schedule maintenance and monitor the equipment that way. So it takes about one year to become your fitter and you're looking between 18, $24 per hour. Instrumentation tech is a little more difficult and uh, you're going to be looking between 27 and $34 per hour. And these are just middle of the ground payments that goes up higher than these. So your instrumentation tech, you're going to have to come and test. You're not going to go just because you came to class for two years and you didn't have any experience as a fitter, you're still gonna have to go get that experience as a fitter. You're probably about two years, three years, and then you'll become a tech, and you have to test for that. Um, they're very specific with that, so. But once you do that, you can make pretty good living doing it. Uh, mobile crane operations. Um, this is kind of what I call the surgeon of like a construction yard or out there, kind of because it's one guy working in a rig, a lot of pressures on him, but he also makes the money too. But if he messes up, just like a surgeon, it's a big deal. So uh, you also just don't go out and become a crane operator. You have to, it's more about being a rigger. You learn to be a rigger first. And once you master being a rigger, you work to be a signal person. And once you master being a signal person, then you work out your way up to being a crane operator. And from there, you're not gonna jump in a big crane like that. You're gonna go work at a, work on a, what I call like a cherry picker. And then you're gonna work your way up and get better and better cranes. Now. It's a lot of pressure. It's a tight knit group, but the money's there and it's actually a really cool job. So it's worth doing. Uh, field safety one and safety technology. I combine those classes now into one. I would actually say that's a good, if you're already out in your crafts, you already have your certifications or whatnot. And you're looking to maybe impress your boss, maybe show that you have more, more upward mobility. Come take the, the safety technology stuff with us. You know, you can go and show them that you're advancing your career. So 
This is our cost per semester. You can see welding is a little more expensive. It's 550 per semester. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, the rest of the classes are 500 per semester. Those are pretty good prices, guys. That's why we're a nonprofit. A lot of the companies around here donate money to us. And I told you all that we were privately owned. Well, that's how we're able to keep our prices down. We don't we don't charge for parking fees. You don't have to buy books, all that kind of stuff. So we keeps our fees down really low. It really is. And, you know, and with us being over here and of course we have a lot of different post-secondary options, you know, with our, our typical like Del Mar College or Coastal Spring College or the universities. Um, that's why we have Crowd Train Center as a, as a partner because, you know, this is pretty affordable once you start to look at everything else broken down and, um, you know, the hands-on training that you get over here, it is definitely worth your time um, because he just talked about how valuable it turns into by, you know, dedicating those three semesters to getting your certification and then look how it pays off with your, you know, with your hour, hourly wage. So this actually is very, very infor affordable and, um, you, you guys have ways, you know, for, for those individuals to take care of the, the payments. and Correct. That so we also, so that kind of reminds me, your first semester, we usually don't have, we do have scholarships available. Sometimes we'll have some for first years, but we want to see how you do first. You know, these companies that donate money, they want to see what kind of a employee you might be. So they want to see your attendance records, that kind of stuff. They want to see how dedicated you are. They want to see what your grades are like. So after your first year, you you will be eligible to get a scholarship through one of these companies that sponsor us. And uh, it can either be a hundred dollars. It could be like up to three hundred dollars. It all depends on how much they donate that year. Um, another good thing about it is our classes for our adults are at night. That means you can work during the day at any job and come to us at night to further your career. That's one of the main reasons is so that we can get more people doing these jobs down here. So one of the things when I on the slide that I don't talk about is that most of these jobs come with overtime. You're not working just 40 hours a week. I mean, some of those minimum wage jobs out there, you can't even get them to let you work over 32 hours. These jobs, you're working 50, 60 hours a week. So if you're making $40 an hour and you're getting that overtime, you're, but once you get past 40, you're making $60 an hour. And some of these jobs are sending you to go do maybe in, uh, in Midland, Texas or something like that. So you're getting per diem too. And if you don't know what per diem, it's Latin for per day. That's an allowance for your overhead and food for the day, which is between 90 and $130 a day. I don't know if you all know what minimum wage is. It's $7.25, which is really hard to make a living and live comfortably off that. You usually have to make accommodations otherwise. So not only are you making these great wages and overtime, but you're also getting per diem, which is amazing. Some of these companies, is, they don't even care if you're, you still just get per diem as an extra credit to work at their company. They just offer it, even if you're not having to travel, which is amazing. That's how much money comes into these companies and how much they want a good workers. So it's kind of like supply and demand. Back when I was in high school, they told us we all had to go to college. Well, guess what we all did? We all went to college. So I was standing in line to try to find a job with 80 other people to get one job. Well, what happened to these fields? All the people went to college instead, so supply and demand in order for these people to like get people to work for them, they had to up the pay. So these people are coming out of here. They have no student loans and they're making average exact what a college graduate or double what a college graduate makes right away without any student loan, which is amazing. So it's a really good deal. Um, so I talked about those partners that donate to us, Valero, Repcon, Flint Hills, Jam Davidson, Lion Delvisel, Rab Elias, Bud Electric, Siggo, Camoris, MMR, Bay LTD. These are really big companies down here. They're not even just down here. Some of these are nationwide companies. So they're really investing in our community to get good workers. And they want those people to come out of our community because the more money that stays in our community, the better our community grows and does better. So uh, why do you think they donate to us? Uh, well, the coastal bend is short on certified craft professionals. We need welders, pipe fitters, in instrumentation fitters, and technicians really bad. Right now, there's about 3,000 industrial jobs available. That means those 3,000 jo jobs are being given away from people from out of state, down from Mexico. They're getting that per diem to come here and do these jobs because we don't have enough people to do them. So we want to get our own people trained up to do these. And there's more companies coming. Like, I think there's been about three in the last year that have moved in here and are going to be open up here pretty soon. 
Um, so what we do is at CTC, Craft Training Center, is create a pipeline of qualified employees for these companies. So this is where I talk a little bit about a story about one of our students. He was a high school student, and this is the Wall Street Journal actual story. He uh, graduated from us. He was actually having trouble while he was in school here. And our president, Alan Law, had to pull him aside, you know, kind of ask him, you know, what's going on? Why are you having problems? It was his senior year. And he said his mom is working three jobs. So he has to wake up, get his little sister dressed, get her to the bus. And by the time he's done with that, he's missing the bus. So he has, was missing days with us. So we let him make it up. You know, we're, we're going to work with people to get them in the right way w moving through this. So he actually came back a couple of years later with his Wall Street Journal story. And he was making $150,000. That's amazing. At 19, 20 years old, I wasn't making near anything like that. So it's pretty cool. Yeah, and, same. <laughs> and, you know, one, one of the best things is he started actually crying and thanking us. And he was like, I wanted to tell you all that I came back and I bought my mom a house. 20 years old and buying his mom a house. You know, I, you know what I was doing at 20 years old? <laughs> Not, Not buying that. your mom's house. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> So, you know, it's stories like that that actually make this really worth doing. So, and, uh, you know, these kids are great. So here's the coastal bend right now. We actually, that just shows Exxon. There's a couple more that have actually moved in here. We're one of the largest industries in the coastal bend. This is a great area to do this kind of work. Now, we got the shipping channel. There's so many reasons for it to be here. So we always joke that, like, death and taxes are the only industries that are bigger than this because, well, even the people, even we get sick, and so we need medical assistance. And then we also got to pay taxes. So government's bigger. So death and taxes. <laughs> but we're pretty much the third largest industry in the coastal bend, and we're growing. And like all these companies that you see up there, when they hire, they're not just hiring one or two people. They might be hiring 20 to 300 people at a time. So even when a new company comes here, how do you think they're going to get new employees? They're not just bringing their own employees here for these kind of jobs. They're going to, a new company comes here and they're going to offer more. They're going to look at what the average income is for like a welder. They're going to say, okay, we're going to pay them just a little bit more. Start try to steal employees from other companies. So it's a constant competition for you. I would love to have that. Kind of, I would, you know, when I lose a job or when I go job hunting, I have to be the one that goes and searches. I would love it for companies to come and recruit me. That'd be great. So <laughs> that's a kind of like thinking about how do you want to live your life? So we also teach soft skills here. And uh, one of the reasons we do this is because that's what these companies want. We teach eye contact, how important it is when you go to an interview and you make eye contact with the person that you're interviewing with. You could have two people that come in. One has 10 years experience as a welder. The one, the other one just graduated from like say craft training center. Well, if the, ten, if the one that has 10 years experience doesn't look you in the eye, but the other guy does, and you gotta trust this person to do a million dollar project or be the welder for it, who are you gonna trust? It might, the guy with 10 years experience might be better, but your perception of him is that he's not because he's not looking in the eye. You feel like you can't trust him. So eye contact can make a big difference in your interview. Being able to talk in a clear voice, huge. Before this job, I never, I was so afraid to talk in public in front of people. And now I get up in front of like auditoriums full of high school students, you know, it's, and I, I like it. Being able to talk in a clear voice helped me with that. So it's going to be really important for you to talk in a clear voice so that your boss understands that you know how to do the job that he's telling you to do. Uh, take turns talking, you know, bosses don't like to be interrupted. So we, you know, we, we want you to treat your instructor kind of like your boss. We, we act like this is a job here for a reason. So punctual being on time, not sure if you don't show up for class so many times, we're going to treat it just like a job, like I said. So if you're not, if you're late more than three times, you know, we're going to kick you out. If you're uh, don't show up unless you have an excuse, we understand that life happens. But you know, be punctual. We got to teach those skills so that it reflects good on us when you go get a job. Attention to detail. This is one that a lot of we talk to females actually about because a lot of there's a big misconception that they can't do these jobs, but it's exactly opposite. Women wake up, they uh, put makeup on, which is an artistic skill. Welding is a hand-eye coordination skill, so women can drive a car put a sharp object next to their eyeball, talk on the cell phone, drink coffee, and listen to the radio at the same time. Yeah, we can. Being able to multitask. Well. <laughs> so when they all put makeup on, guys, when we wake up, we do as little as possible to get ready. Well, some guys. <laughs> um, 
So, I mean, that kind of stuff adds up. And I mean, that's an artistic skill that translates well into welding or some of these skills. So, you know, it's not just for men anymore. Uh, being a team player, really important. You know, a lot of people are also to work well in a group. So those kind of go hand in hand together. You know, people always get upset when they're driving by a construction site and they see just eight guys standing around one guy while he's working. Well, it has to be like that sometimes because in order to do the next part of the project, this guy has to get his job done. So they're waiting and assisting that guy as he gets his job done. Well, what happens when that one person doesn't get his job done in time or he's not a team player or he's got a bad attitude or all that kind of stuff? You know, it makes the whole project late. We kind of see that a little bit more on the coastal bend. I think right now with all the construction going on, you know, working well in a group, we'll get the job done faster. And that's what the whole point of you working for some of these companies, right? They make a lot of money doing this and you're going to make a lot of money working for them. So I also, I just talked about a positive attitude. That's a huge one. You know, that's how you're going to get promoted and move up. You don't want like, you don't want to be the welder that's turning 45, 50 years old and still welding. You want to maybe be a superintendent, maybe or a lead man. You want to work your way up the chain because welding's hard, <laughs> you know. So you want to work your way up that chain. And this one is a firm grip and a handshake is huge. I know right now during COVID, it's you know not too many are doing handshakes, but I'll tell you what: when I in an interview and I shake my future boss's hand, I can tell whether I got that job or not. There's a lot of information that's transferred in a handshake. So kind of think about all this stuff when you go in for an interview, but that's my presentation and uh i kept it kind of short today but and uh if there's any questions but here's our little slide uh, if you want to learn to trade and make more money come to craft training center yes absolutely and i can speak firsthand you guys i work very closely with them and um i mean they're very passionate about what they do i mean you heard in matt's presentation they they treat this like a real job because they don't want to set you up to fail. They don't want to give you any false expectations that you may have, you know, like, oh yeah, it was just school and you know, and I can just zoom through it and then you get to the job and you're not prepared at all. They genuinely put their time and dedication into helping each individual that goes in there and um, they come out rock stars. I love that story about, you know, the 2019, 20 year old who is making, you know, six figures at that age and it's just because he just took the time to, you know, really invest in himself in that short, you don't realize how short of a time, you know, one, two, three, four, five semesters can be, you know, um, this is an alternative route for post-secondary, you know, schooling. You don't have to always go to the, the standard, you know, two-year, four-year schooling. This is um, something you can get in. It's very hands-on. Um, like they said, they have over 72,000 square feet that blows my mind and I go out there sometimes and I mean they have so many different buildings right how many buildings do you have for different sure. uh, so we're uh, we're part of associated builders and contractors and the safety council they have the front two buildings and uh if I don't know if you've been down but we're off leopard right there by refinery row and you see a big craft training center sign like it's written on the side of the building and you drive by and you see it and uh a lot of people don't know but we're like we're one of the kind of work the untold secret of the coastal bend because not a lot of people know about us, yeah. but more should because it's such a good thing. So absolutely. And, um, you know, he's talking about how, um, people have to be hired out of state, out of the country, out of the city, because we truly just don't have the certified people here in the coastal bend. And, um, you know, the trades and instrumentation and welding and everything that is an in-demand job right now in the coastal bend and if you've been in coastal compass we have this whole wall of posters that's just talking about you know what certification it is what class you need and how can you start making that money uh you know matt was talking about all of the uh you know your wages and your your pay after just taking the time to get certified it is valuable if you just put that short time to dedicate to your education i promise you it is going to pay off and it is fantastic exactly so like our shortest one is pretty much i think instrumentation i think that's one that anyone can here can come and do and within one year you can have your foot in the door of one of these refineries and you're looking at at least making 40 something thousand dollars a year starting off and that's you're still going to start off as a helper but having these certifications are going to help yeah. how long you're going to be a helper. <laughs> so, you know, Still, if you go in, exactly. even if you get your foot in the door and somebody and you don't have these certifications, you might be a helper for three years then. I'm, 
we're talking three three months compared to three years when you only had to come to class for one year after work. And it, we're not talking long either. So you don't come five nights a week for class. It's only two times a week. Once you get your core done, it's three times a week your first semester because you got to get your core class in. And that's included in the price. We don't charge extra for it. But after that, it's only twice a week, either Monday and Wednesday or Tuesday and Thursday. I mean, that's nothing. I, <laughs> I don't know if I'm a salary employee and I work those kind of hours and I don't get any extra pay for it. So <laughs> Exactly, exactly. So it's <laughs> worth just taking those two nights yep. out of the week to come in and just get it taken care of. And, um, you know, like he said, this isn't just a male dominated industry. Women, you who is expected to get in those little nooks and crannies, right? You said that there was, <laughs> wasn't there an instructor that could do it upside down and with a mirror? Oh, so one of our, Tiffany, she's a, she actually went to school here, came here and actually ended up being an instructor here. And she's, she has, she's a little tiny girl. She has to use a little milk crate to get up in the welding booth. <laughs> But she's an, she's an awesome welder, too, at that. So, And when I was working at Kiwit, there was female welders out there. It's not it's it's no longer a taboo for it to happen. So, you know. Yeah. Well, <laughs> you guys, you heard it here. He had a lot of great information. And, of course, um, you can always give them a call. Their number is right there. It's at 361-289-1636. But like I said, Matt is in here on Fridays um, from two to four ish, sometimes three yep. to five. Just depends when he can break away from in there. <laughs> in here. And he's here to talk with you guys. We have a lot of people come in and they're just, um, you know, like I said, people come in here typically thinking of just the standard two year, four year, you know, institutions, uh, colleges and universities, which is a great option. But there are other, you know, options for you and you just got to come in here. And we always say that take the first step just to come in and get the information, because I promise you, you will leave with multiple, you know, many options leaving. And um, it could very well be that the trades and, um, you know, this work is for you. So just come in on and when Matt is in here. But as always, you can just give us a call, too. And we will definitely get you connected. Yeah. With also, if you want to go to our website. It uh, you can apply there. We do semesters just like any other school, summer, spring, and fall. Right now, we are in our summer semester, so it's too late for that one. But you can still sign up for our fall semester. And the, our only requirements we don't we don't require that you've ever graduated from high school, so that's not a requirement. You don't have to. You have your GED. You have to just read at eighth grade English level, pass a drug test because that's very important. Whether it's coming to school here, you're working with dangerous material. You know, you're learning how around dangerous equipment. So it's really important because it's going to happen if once you graduate from here, you're still going to take that drug test over somewhere else. So yes. start learning to be that way now. And then so read at eighth grade English level, pass a drug test and pay the tuition. That's all we ask. Simple. And be on time. Take, yeah. be, be a good student. So that's so simple. And it's as easy as that, you guys. Um, and like I said, um, yes, go check out their website. It's www ct i don't pcb.org yeah, it's super CTC, super simple cb.org yes um and as always matt thank you for connecting with us yes, today definitely. it's fun yes and we enjoy uh, our partnership yes absolutely and um until next time and have a great day bye guys well, thank you to Craft Training Center. Thank you to Matt for joining us today. He had lots and lots of great information. Um, it really, really, I love Craft Training Center. I mean, there's just so many opportunities for you there. So um, come on in. Let's get that information. Let's get you um, enrolled somewhere, right? Just take that first step. Come on in here, and we will get you taken care of. Like I said, we are here, and we are dedicated to guide you to success. Well, thank you, everybody. Like I said, thank you for connecting with us today. Um, and until next time, um, I hope you all have a great rest of your week, and we'll see you later.